The major responsibility of every government is to secure the lives and property of its citizens. Sadly, 10 years ago, Nigeria failed 276 girls as the government watched them get weeks away by members of the Boko Haram terrorist group. Over the years, some of the girls between the ages of 16 and 18 managed to escape. Others were rescued by the armed forces, and over 90 of them remain in captivity as we speak. And the question is, shall they ever return home, or shall they just become a part of the statistics of the lost in the history of a terror that continues to torment Nigeria? On this note, I bid you welcome to Channels Being Where Curiosity Meets Conversations, taking us a step further into the future we desire. I am Sunes Nathaniel, and on this episode of the program, we'll be going beyond the headlines to address the issue of terrorism and gender, even as we walk ourselves and talk ourselves through genuine questions that will ask ourselves, what have we learned from the Chiba girls' kidnappings? Joining me right now to address these issues today is Dr. Olajumoke Jenyo, a research fellow at the National Defense College, uh, Nigeria Department of Conflict, Peacekeeping, and Humanitarian Studies with the Center for Strategic Research and Studies. She has been fully involved in the organization and execution of various trainings and peace support operations aimed towards securing and protecting females and their human rights. You're welcome, Dr. Jenyo. Thank you very much, Mr. All right. Nathaniel. All right. It's a uh, pleasure to be here. It's always a pleasure to have uh, a lady who's very adept when it comes to peacekeeping, you know, security strategies and all that. It's always very, very interesting to have you uh, coming. Uh, let's, let's, begin, let's begin with this honest question. Yeah. What is the possibility of rescuing and reuniting the Chibok girls with their loved ones as we speak, the ones who are still in captivity? Oh. For me, that question, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's one that I would say that reuniting them and finding them and uniting them with their family, mm. it has an uncertain uh, answer or outcome. No one can actually say, will they, will they, will, can, are they still alive? Mm. What's their condition? Where are they? You know, it's, uh, it's a big issue. But uh, notwithstanding, the ones that are left, I'm sure that uh, if the government, if the people, if we want to find them, we will. If we have the political will, you know, we will, we will find them. If there's a coordination effort, and, uh, effective collaboration between the government, the uh, relevant agencies, security agencies, uh, you know, the right uh, intelligence, mm. yeah. All right. I think we should be able so, to have so a, I like the fact that you have brought a, a political will. So in looking at that statement, where we've brought in that political will, what do you think has improved or how has our approach really changed you know, to counter terrorism within the past decade? I mean, from, the, from when we had this incident till now, how has our approach to counter terrorism changed, in your own opinion? Yes. Um, over the, you know, this last decade, after the issue of the Chibok girls, you know, the Nigerian government's approach to terrorism has been... Hopped, and we can see an increasing, you know, increasing advancement mm. in areas of technology in the ways at which they carry out their operation across the security sector institutions. You know, we can see the use of uh, advanced surveillance. We can see the use of drones. And uh, there's a coordinated, um, am I going to put it, intelligence uh, platform. And I think there's this uh, national emergency. Yeah. So, uh, if, yeah. It, uh, it, 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 but, but you see, the question then becomes, mm -hmm. if, if it's improving like we think it has in the last decade, why do we continue to see uh, similar incidents where we have children carried en masse uh, away from schools, away from, you know, from family, taken into captivity? Why, why, why do we see it even presently in 2024? Why, how, how is that continuing to happen? Uh, that's a very, very good question. The thing is, um, there's this impact from... This Chibo girls, the adoption of Chibo girls, and the, uh, for the fact that the government has not been able to bring them all back, mm -hmm. you know, there's the, there's the aftermath effect of it. There's the, uh, am I, I going to call it the negative effect of it? Because in a way, it has affected education. Mm. Yeah, in a way, people are not really, and uh, if, if, you, if, you, if you notice, research pointed out that we have had over 38 to 40 cases after the Chibo similar girls. Cases, similar, yeah. similar, similar cases. Similar cases of school adoption. So it has a negative effect on education. It has, because some parents 
are not even willing to uh, send, let, allow their child, children to go to school. Even the ones that go to school, you know, are not, uh, they are not, how am I going to put it, they are not confident, you know, of the security. They are not, uh, they are not, they are not sure of the security. So there's a way it is. And, uh, you know, uh, for all these things, for the, for the, for the, what's it called? For the, am I going to put it, for the, at, uh, uh, the terrorist the, something? Exactly. Yeah. The terrorism and all that. You know, if you look at it, the government has been doing a lot in a way to clamp them down. But be it as it may, we've forgotten the, the, the causes of this terrorism. Hmm. If we are going to tackle terrorism, we should tackle it the alongside the root causes of terrorism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We so, should tackle so it in alongside your opinion, the root causes. In your opinion, what would the root causes then be? Yeah, the root causes of terrorism, looking at the socioeconomic issues, a lot of issues, poverty, eh? look at the issues of marginalization, look at the issues of illiteracy, look at the issues of uh, even some of the issues from even the, the, the security sector at that time, because we, there, there was really a lack of synergy. But uh, thanks to the Chiba girls and some other that you know, brought about this synergy between, we can see now they have coordinated exercises, coordinated responses you know, to issues of security. Mm. Yeah. Uh, some Nigerians will continue to say, did Nigeria really learn any lesson you know, from, from this experience? And if there are lessons to have been learned, what do you think those lessons will be? Yeah, well, for me, we've actually learned a lot of lessons from it. And uh, to start with, I'll start with the, the, the ways in which we, do, we coordinate. We uh, yes, the yes, coordination. Yes, yeah, among the security sector. Mm. You know, the Nigerian government has actually invested in the advancement in the technology, uh -huh, as well as even the training yeah, to build the capacity of the security uh, personnel, personnel yes. yeah, both home and abroad, and to even uh, have a coordinated, you know, you know, you know imp the importance of intelligence, you know the importance of uh, having a pool, you know, where you can draw up credible intelligence, intelligence yeah. yes, and uh, this is one Nigeria, so there's no need for, for instance, police doing their own, uh, their, what's the it called, army. army doing their own, mm. and so there's a coordinated uh, effort, yes. be it as it may, there are still some issues, but notwithstanding, we are seeing progress. And even in their policies, in their policies, a lot of the security sector institutions, I can tell you for free, now mainstream gender in their um, policies. Yeah. For instance, the Nigeria Army, that was in March, uh, March 31st, 2021, they now have a gender policy of which you know how it is when it comes to gender issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then the civil defense has to, even the police, had the renew, had the agenda policy renewed. Yeah, mm. they, they, they reviewed it. Then they have the all women call. Yeah, that's the NNCDC have yeah. the all women call. The army has the all women call. Even the Nigerian Air Force has this. Is it Nigerian women like, women like, yeah, war? Yeah, at, yes, yeah. yes. So in 2018, you know, and. Uh, and amongst many others. It's good that you so, have brought, it's good that yeah. you have brought in that gender that gender yeah. aspect of yeah. this whole uh, fight against terrorism. Yeah. I, I want to ask, uh, how does this you know having this women group and everything, how does it you know affect you know this kind of kidnappings, especially most of the people who are usually kidnapped are girls and women. So how does how does having those groups how does it help you know to to stop such incidents from happening? Absolutely, you know. The United Council Resolution 2025 that was adopted in the year 2000 has actually uh, highlighted that women and girls are at the disadvantaged when it comes to, you know, at, 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 at uh, conflict, uh, conflict, conflict situations yeah. and the hair. So it's specifically mentioned that women and girls should be given opportunity to participate. Mm. They should be protected. They should be given opportunity to prevent. They should be able to, be able to participate in peace processes, mm -hmm. you know, so you give them a voice, they are being affected. Meanwhile, when it comes to issues of decision making, they are not at the table. And even when they are at the table, they are being represented like tokenism, just put one woman among 100, you know. So looking at the way the Nigerian security sector or the security sector institutions as a whole in Nigeria is addressing it, it's given the women opportunity to participate, mm. you know, to participate in peace processes, to participate in these issues. They can, they can, they can even go for coordinated uh, exercises. Yeah. They, yes, they even carry out operations now. And you know what women can do. You know the strength women have. Even for intelligence, you can't underestimate an intelligence that a woman will gather for you. 
So if you, if you bring women to the table, give them the opportunity, draw that gender perspective mm. you know, to anything you're doing, it's going to go a long way. Women are over half of the population. Mm. And uh, for me, I say it at every time I have an opportunity to say that we are at this stage of uh, insecurity because uh, we did not exploit you know, the... the the the, the, gen the gender the gender part to it like I'm like we didn't, we didn't bring we, in the women we didn't bring in yeah we didn't we didn't we didn't exploit what they can do they can do a lot and that is why the the terrorists are using them if you look at it now they are using them as uh, agents you know if if you even if you look at the proliferation of uh, small arms and white uh, light weapons they are very active so if we refuse to use them the right way. Then don't go the other way. So, and I, can, I appreciate the fact that uh, government and uh, you know, successive chiefs and all that, they've been able to identify that and uh, they are really making good use of it to give women opportunity to serve, give women opportunity to profile lasting and sustainable peace and security, mm. and, uh, which grows uh, across all other sectors. Yeah. And so uh, let's come again. I still want to go into the, the roles that women will really play. You know, and I'm um, looking at it from the perspective of, you know, tech, looking at it from the perspective of understanding the people who are being kidnapped and the girls. How do, how do, how, how do we put women, because you also don't want to endanger too many women when it comes to the fight against terrorism. Mm -hmm. So how really do we position them to give that full effect that we need right now? Okay. Um, I'm going to answer this question by pointing out some of the rules that women can do. Let's, t let's, uh, draw, let's do an analogy of when the Chibok uh, issue happened. Mm. Did you notice the, the global, global mm. impact of that, awesome. of, of that scenario? And uh, that actually pointed out the resilience that women has, the voice that women had. Mm. It was all over. You know, this, with this, we can see that women, when it comes to advocacy, even to prevent it, they can do a lot. Mm. Yeah, so we have to give them that opportunity to be able to pay their bills. We have to give them the opportunity to be able to serve their country. We have to give them the opportunity to, why would I be deprived because I'm a woman? Mm. To be deprived of what I can do or what I cannot do. Mm. When it comes to intelligence, you can, research find that proves that a woman can do a lot when it comes to gathering intelligence. And all of these, you know, there's no successful, uh, what's it called, oppression without... A woman behind somewhere there. Uh, without... A very credible what's it called intelligence. Yeah. So you can imagine, even the logistics and all that, women can do a lot. And if you look at it now, women are being given opportunity, even in the Nigerian Navy, they are not sailors, they even manage ships. Mm. Even the air, air women, you remember the other of lady, Temisa Kweda, yeah, died. Look, the at the, look at the exercises in that fact, she, she was one of the best. Yeah, women of war, the, the Nigerian Air Force in 2018. Yeah, they established the women of war of which they, 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 they carry out attacks on terrorists. Terrorists. Yeah, oh. and they advocate. They advocate women, even in their own corner, even in the various houses and all that. You know what women do. You know what they can do. So, it's a bit... <laughs> all right. I, I yeah. think we're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to be going on a short break at this time. And uh, when we return, we'll be probing further into Nigeria's fight against terrorists, asking questions about amnesty and the calls to further negotiate with terrorists. We'll be right back. Don't go away. And Ifoma Williams, your guide on this transformative journey. Welcome to Transform Her, the first of its kind on-air coaching program exclusively on Channel Television. I define a product as that perfect thing that people are ready to part with their money for. A male-dominated environment um, being required um, to uphold the position of leadership. The good, the bad, the ugly, they all pull together to make you this woman and this person um, that you can be. Join us in shaping the future of African female leadership as we provide practical resources for entrepreneurs and aspiring C-suite leaders. Every Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. West African time, we bring you expert interviews, transformative coaching, and the tools you need for exponential personal and professional growth. Transform her because it's time to unlock your potential and lead with purpose. 
Welcome back. You're still watching Channels Beam coming to you live from our studio in Abuja. Dr. Olajuboke Jenyo is our guest today and we're still looking at lessons learned and more that can be done with regards to the Chibok girls and terrorism in Nigeria. Uh, Dr. Jenyo, thank you for uh, staying with us. Uh, let's, let's get into further probe as regards why are we still seeing incidents of, you know, high volume of kidnapping when it comes to young girls, you know, students and all that. What are those things, what are those challenges that are preventing us from stopping it totally? It's a very good question. And I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be, it's, if I'm not mistaken, it's, it's most likely the top priority for the... For the, for the discourse, for, yes. Well, I'm telling I you, agree. Oliver. I agree. Um, the issue is, the, if you look at the causes or the challenges that has actually prevented us from making a positive uh, edgeway when it comes to putting a total full stop mm. to issues of uh, school, school kidnappings mm. and all other forms of insecurities is intertwined. It's so, there's a lot of multi, multifaceted issues just, you know, connected, you know, looking at the socioeconomic issues, looking at the issues of poverty, uh, looking at the lack of intelligence, you know, uh, issues of uh, illiteracy, uh, look at the educational gap, which is also causing a lot of disunity in the society. It's a big issue. And uh, looking at all the issues of ungoverned spaces. Mm. Nigeria is such a big country, and uh, there are so many places that are ungoverned. So what do you expect? Places like that are, they're, they're, it's, 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 it's a home for Terrorists. drugs, mm. it's a home for transporting, uh, what's it called, Arms. weapons. Yeah. And you know when it comes to the issues of weapons, you understand what it is. Some people are, 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 are benefiting, the manufacturer is benefiting from it, the people that are transporting it are benefiting, and you also have the people that are also benefiting from the proceeds of the war, so the economy of war. So you can imagine all that. So we cannot solve all these issues, the issue of um, insecurity, except we have a, you know, a awesome and uh, approach no, to let, solve Let me, let me this put issue. you on the spot a bit. Yeah, please. This ungoverned spaces, mm -hmm. this unmanned spaces, mm -hmm. how really do we get people there? I mean, bring in tech, bring in knowledge, bring in intelligence. How really do we get people to ensure that we don't have to give that excuse that, oh, we can't get into certain spaces or we are not in certain places? How do we get more, the, more, more people there? The government needs to do a mapping of these places. The government needs to do a mapping of these spaces. Because uh, you can imagine, if you don't, if, uh, if there's no, the, the, the government's presence is not in a place, you know, no police, nothing, no rule, no other, nothing. So you can imagine a lot of crimes that will, go, uh, that, that, that will happen in that, 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 that space. So the government needs to do a mapping of these places and you know, strategize how to ensure that the government's presence is there. Mm. Because with that, we'll be able to look, look at the issues of uh, this um, uh, transnational organized crime. And look at the borders. So we have a lot of unmanned borders mm. that people just go, come, go. We have a lot of issues even coming in from other a lot of people, you know, coming in from other countries, neighboring countries, that are terrorists. How do we account for that? Mm. Wow. Okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very big burden. It's a very huge question. And uh, one other question that comes out from a discussion like this is how much of our problem with terrorism is based on religion? In fact, let me rephrase properly. How much of our problem in Nigeria is religion? It's not a lie that religion is playing a very big role when it comes to uh, the problems, the, in, in, the disunity and the insecurity in the country. But we have to understand that it's not just religion. Mm. We have socioeconomic is, uh, issues, we have political issues you know, linked to it. So for us to be able to address religion, we have to be able to come up with a holistic approach to address these issues that are intertwined. Yeah. So, so you, are, you, are you saying then, are you saying then that uh, religion prize, some of the issues we have religion prize on other, you know, socioeconomic issues? Is that what you're trying to say? They are linked to each other. They're all interlinked? Re yes. Socioeconomic issues is linked to the political. The political is linked to, to the, the religious. To the religious issues, you know. So, you can imagine. So, how much orientation do you think is being done right now to, to, to break that chain? 
uh, from which poverty and religion, you know, forms like a block against us. How much, how much do you think in your research, how much do you think that we are doing right now, you know, to, to give people a knowledge that changes that perspective? The truth is that we're doing well. And if you, if you, if you take a look at, back at the election, the last election, you can see that the level of the level of uh, level at which Awareness. the people are aware yeah. and the level at which they were ready to take up everything in their hands you know they were willing the people were willing they understood the social media has been you know has been has been helpful in as much as we know that it has the negative uh, aspect but in the area of trying to dissuade people from you know putting aside religion putting aside uh, what's it called biases. biases and all that i think we're, we're making a we're making a good uh, we're making effort and even the media what we're doing right now, it's also, it's, 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 it's yes, of course. So you can imagine. So the media needs to keep doing it. Even the National Orientation Commission, you know, they need to do a lot when it comes to this. They need to do a lot, even the issue of uh, trying to reinforce, uh, what's it called, uh, nationalism, nationalism, patriotism. You know, they can do a lot. So I think uh, those are one of the ways we can exploit. Yeah. So we all are we all stakeholders. All right. Again, yes. I'm going to put you on the spot. Mm -hmm. Should we negotiate with terrorists? <sighs> Many people are craving and are pushing. You're a woman. In the light of all the things you've seen in your research, you know, in peacekeeping, in policy shaping, in security, do you think that there is a way, there is a headway in negotiating with terrorists? You know, it's a, it's a question that has a two sides of the coin to it. I wouldn't say yes, I wouldn't say no, because uh, I can imagine if I have a child, God forbid, that is kidnapped, and I've got a phone call, and I have the option to negotiate, am I still going to say no, 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 no negotiate? Mm. So at times, uh, we wouldn't know this, how we'll react to these issues until we, we, we we're feel in we're in the shoes. So that's why I wouldn't say yes or no. But we have to be cautious. That's just, we have to be cautious about it. And uh, when we are doing that, we need to do it by the other, you know, the other uh, aspects, like the intelligence needs to be top notch, you know, the coordination efforts, coordinated amongst, you see, I keep emphasizing on the coordinated efforts amongst the security, security sector. Yes, because it, is, it, uh, it goes a long way. If there's no gap for them, for the terrorists to exploit, they wouldn't have a way to do this thing. So we need to do that. We need to uh, ad keep our ad 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 advancement in technology, even in training, capacity building, you know, all that. We need to do it alongside that negotiation. All right. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, just before you go, uh, mm -hmm. let, me, let me come to this one again. Amnesty is one of those things that we're talking about when it comes to terrorism mm -hmm. in Nigeria today. How well has Amnesty fared? How, how well has Amnesty served us when it comes to the fight against terror? And do you think it's something we should continue to toe that line going forward? Or should we just go straight up and say, let's stamp this guy out once and for all? I mean, the president is even tired. The president says, I'm not negotiating. I'm not even giving any money. I'm tired, right? I, I, let's get these guys out. What do you think? Yeah, the Amnesty program, it's, um, you know, it's one that has actually generated a lot of mixed feelings amongst the population. Mm. But the, my, my take, whenever I have the opportunity to put a voice on this, mm. is that uh, there's no, 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 no plan that is cast on, on stone. Just like in peace support operation, when you're going for deployment, when you have a plan, you, know, you have to keep reviewing that plan. Mm. Yes, when you review that plan, that is when you know if that plan is still valid or it is not valid. So the amnesty program needs, it was supposed to be reviewed from time to time. It's not something that, okay, we just keep it. If you look at it, a lot has changed. And we're still running on the same program. Mm. So a lot has actually changed. We're talking about a decade. So that's my take. It's, some, it's, a, it's, a, it's a program that is supposed to be reviewed from time to time to test the tenacity, to test the, the, the effectiveness, yeah. and to test if it is still something that is valid, necessary or not, or it should be scrapped All right. or reformed. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jen Yo. That's, uh, that's about the much we can take right now. I'm hoping uh, by the next time we meet, we're going to be talking something better and something that we can smile about because there's nothing to smile about to have Absolutely. all those almost 90 something girls uh, still in captivity. Yes, yeah. and uh, I, I would like to say, if you permit me, yeah. I think another thing that uh, I would have loved the federal government to do if I had the opportunity to, to, to advise them 
is to say that the government was supposed to have uh, probably given like a recommendation. I mean, not recommendation, I scrapped that. Um, what's it called? To, uh, like, uh, will I say a re what do you call so, it? Like to put it in the, in the view of the public that this is what a we're report. doing. A report. A report. Exactly. Tell us, how many Chibo girls were abducted? What, you have their names. They have their pictures because the belief is that they had registered for Waek when they were to write the Waek when they were abducted. So what are their names? How many have you rescued? And the people that you have re that rescued, how are they faring? The ones you have not rescued, what are you doing? Mm. So this boils down to issues of transparency and accountability. Mm. I'm sure if this has been done, you know, the, the, we all wouldn't feel this way. Because we all are feeling very bad. Mm. We're feeling very bad. But uh, even if the government is in anything, we should know we should what you're see. doing. The so, people that are that are that have been that have been that have been what's it called that have been rescued. Yeah. How are you integrating them? Their children are you fair? Are they fairing? We, we would have to get we would have to get the government to know why they are not speaking on that. Thank you very much for your time. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. It's my All pleasure. right, that's our time here on the Beam today. Thank you for staying tuned. We can continue this conversation everywhere on Twitter on social media platforms. Just reach us and tell us what you think can be done. I'm Sunes Nathaniel, and till I come your way next week, I hope that we can find a way to secure Nigeria such that women, girls, and everybody can thrive and flourish. See you later. Bye. April 14, 2014, uh -huh. remains indelible in the memories of many Nigerians. Yes. Being today, over 200 school girls were kidnapped from the government's girls' secondary school in Chiba, Bornu State. These critical stakeholders have converged on the Unity Fountain in Abuja in high spirits, voraciously demanding the safe release of girls believed to be in captivity. The BBOG approbation, which means bring back our girls, is a movement widely recognized by many across the country, which was birthed after the unfortunate incident. We, the Kibaku, are deeply disappointed with the pervasive failure by successive governments of Borno State since 2014 in their inability or refusal or failure to rescue all our daughters for a decade now. Within this time, 48 parents have lost their lives mostly due to heart conditions and other health-related reasons. In a similar vein, other stakeholders make their demands while appealing for the intervention of the government. When I hear Nigerians talk anyhow about Chibo girls, all I do is pray for them. I pray for those Nigerians. There are many ways to put a curse on yourself. Many ways to put a curse on yourself. But the worst way to put a curse on yourself is to not be bothered about what has happened to your fellow human being. To be callous toward your fellow human being. You already cursed yourself. Nobody needs to curse you. And here we are today. The key message, disclosure, accountability, closure. The event took a sad turn when one of the mothers broke down in tears. When she was able to pull herself together, she had this to say. It has not been easy waiting for my daughter's return. All I want is to see my daughter dead or alive. It's a decade now since the Chibo girls were adopted by the Boko Haram terrorist group. The relentless determination of the Bring Back Our Girls movement and other critical stakeholders is the driving force for the demand of the release of the girls still believed to be in captivity. Hopefully, the present government of Nigeria takes drastic decisions to ensure that these girls are reunited with their loved ones in no time. From the Unity Fountain in Abuja, Kumbi Aboluwade, Channels Television News.